This is Joseph Drust, and welcome to ZBrush Core. In this tutorial, we'll be covering the basic functionality of ZBrush Core for use with conceptual sculpting. ZBrush Core is an extremely powerful application that will allow you to generate designs quickly and easily as you would in 2D, but in 3D. Using various brushes and features, you can quickly design in 3D with a fast alliteration process to bring ideas to life. So here are some examples of different busts here that were generated using the processes inside of ZBrush Core. So once you launch ZBrush Core, you'll get a window like this that will show up at the top here. And this is Lightbox. Lightbox is ZBrush Core's file management system. In here, you'll see a series of starter projects that you can load. And you also have the ability to open previous saved files that you may have created. So for this tutorial, we're going to use this head planes model here. So to load this, simply click on that and then double click and that will load the file into your scene. So now that you have your model loaded in, before we start talking about the sculpting functionalities, let's first talk about navigation. So to rotate your model inside a ZBrush core, just simply click on an empty space of the canvas here and drag, and that will perform a rotation. Now while you're performing this, if you hold down shift, this will allow you to lock into specific angles. So if you hold down shift and you're close to the front of the model, this will place your model in a front view. If you hold down shift and you're close to the side of the model, this will place you in a side view. So using this option here, you can rotate your model around and then snap to certain views. Now in addition to just rotating, you can also pan your model across the canvas here. And that is done by holding down the Alt button and then clicking in an empty spot. So hold down Alt and then click and drag and that will allow you to move your model. So now you can perform moves and rotates like so. Now, in addition to moving and rotating, you can also zoom in and out of your model. So one option to do this is to hold down the Alt button, click on your canvas and hold down, then release Alt and then drag. And this will allow you to perform a zoom. So that process again is hold down Alt, click on the empty spot on the canvas like you're going to perform a move, then release Alt, and then when you drag now, it's going to perform a zoom. Now, in addition to allowing you to just use these hotkeys to control your navigation, there's buttons over here that will apply the same effect. So if you come over here and click on this move button and drag, it's going to perform a move. If you come over here and click on the scale button and drag, it's going to perform that zoom or scale option. And then if you come and click on this rotate and drag, it's going to perform a rotate. So you can use those processes there to navigate around your model as you work. So now that you have navigation down, we can now start talking about the brush system. So down here at the bottom, you have a series of brushes. So if you come over here and simply click on one of these brushes, that brush will now load. So here I have the clay build up brush selected. With a brush selected, if we come across our model and simply click and drag, this is going to perform a sculpt function. So as you can see here with the clay build up brush, I'm sculpting in a positive direction on my model. With this brush, if I hold down the Alt button and drag, I'm going to sculpt in a negative fashion. So this way you can come through and sculpt positively and then hold down Alt and sculpt negatively to start describing forms on your model. So now, in addition to just sculpting the surface like so, you can also smooth the surface as well. And this is done by holding Shift and then clicking and drag on your model to smooth out those different areas. So to recap on this, just click and drag to create a positive stroke, hold down Alt and drag to create a negative stroke, then hold Shift and drag to smooth the surface out. Now all these processes will use the pressure sensitivity of your device. So if I just do a light stroke here, you're gonna see I'm getting very light buildup of the stroke here. But if I really press down, I'm gonna get a very strong stroke. So you can come through and use those to your advantage to get really nice shapes and forms on your model. Now, in addition to just sculpting brushes, there's also brushes like Move. So if I come down here and select the Move brush, and now come across my model and drag out, this is going to allow me to move the surface, so stretching out the surface as I move it. And then you come back in and smooth those areas out. And this is gonna allow you to come through and create silhouettes and shapes your model really fast. Now you'll notice right now that I'm also doing this process with symmetry. So if I'd use that move option again and move on one side of the face here, you can see it's also going to happen on the other side. To toggle symmetry, you can just press X on your keyboard and this will turn it on and off. So if you press X, it's gonna turn it off and I can see I'm just affecting one side of the face here. If I hit X again, it's going to turn it on and now I'm affecting both sides of the face. 
So you can always disable symmetry if you don't want it on or off. Now, if you make a mark on your model that you don't like, you can also undo this process as well by holding down Control plus Z. If I hit Control and Z, you're gonna see I'm going to start undoing those different processes that I just created. If you undo too far, you can hold Control Shift plus Z, and that will redo the action. So using Control Z, I can go all the way back down to the original version of my mesh. So now that we've covered navigation and also the brushes, there's one more thing we need to talk about, and that is DynaMesh. So I'm just gonna come across this model here, and I'm just gonna hold down Shift, and I'm just gonna smooth out some of his forms here. So just taking out some of those angular shapes there and just smoothing it down like so. So now that I have something like this, I'm gonna go select that move brush again, and I'm gonna change my brush size on this to make it a little bit larger. You can do this by coming up here to the draw size up here and just changing the slider. You can also hold down S on your keyboard, which will allow you to get this draw size option here, and you can change it like this as well. So using these options, I'm just going to enlarge my draw size here, and I'm just gonna start stretching out some of the model. Now I'm gonna do a large stretch here, so I'm just gonna pull this out quite a bit like so. Now as I'm pulling this out, you're going to notice that it's going to start looking a little blocky in this area of my model. And this is because we're stretching the material the model is made of. So if I come through and say now, go back to that clay buildup brush and get a small draw size, and I wanna sculpt something from here all the way to this nose, when I start my sculpt, you're gonna see it's pretty crisp and clear. But when I get to that area that's stretched out, you're gonna notice that my stroke is going to depreciate. So you can see now I'm getting this kind of chunky effect. So ZBrush has a process called DynaMesh, which is its digital clay. This is going to allow us to redistribute the clay on our model and remove the stretched area. So DynaMesh is located underneath the tool palette here in the Geometry tab and then under DynaMesh. And it's this large button right here. Now this model already has DynaMesh active. So what this means is that I can simply come off of my model to the canvas like so. I can hold down control and drag out a box. And when I release, it's going to reapply that DynaMesh, which is going to redistribute the surface of the model. So now if I perform this stroke again, you're gonna notice it's very clean at the top. And then as I'm going down to the nose, you can see it's keeping that consistency all the way through. So using this process of redynameshing your model, it's going to allow you to redistribute that clay. So if I come through and just undo his nose change here and go back to the move brush and get a large brush size on here, and I start pulling this out, so I get a really big volume on the surface here, and I'm gonna smooth that down. And then say I come in with that clay buildup brush again, go back to a smaller draw size, and just start drawing this out. At any point, if I start distorting the model too much like this, I just simply hold control and drag off and redistribute those polygons through that DynaMesh functionality. So now this is all redistributed and now I can come back in and sculpt in this area again and I'm gonna get the same resolution when I'm sculpting here as if I was sculpting here as well. So that is the process of using DynaMesh. Now there's one more thing I wanna talk about quickly and that is masking. So I'm just gonna go back to this version of my model here. I'm gonna hold down S to get my draw size a little bit larger. And then I'm gonna hold down Shift and I'm just gonna smooth out all the features here. So I'm gonna make him pretty smooth all throughout. So just holding down Shift and applying pressure to those different areas to smooth the mesh out. So now that I have something like so, I'm gonna hold down S to get a smaller draw size and I want to come through and apply some masking. So this process here, I'm going to do quite a bit when I'm working on this bust to describe different forms such as noses and ears. So to apply a protective mask to your model, just hold down control and this is gonna give you the mask pen. Now with the mask pen selected, if you come across your model and click and drag, you're gonna notice you're going to get this mask effect. And this is going to protect any area that has this mass on it from your sculpting. So if I come with the clay build up brush now and drag up here and drag across, you're gonna notice that that massed area now has been protected from my sculpt. So you can use this to your advantage to describe different transition areas on your mesh. So let's undo that sculpt there and get us back just to this mask. And let's say now I want to pull an ear out of the model here. Well, if you hold down control, it's gonna give us that mask pen again. But while you're holding down control, if you just click off your model like so, 
it's going to inverse your mask. So just holding down control and clicking off the model will allow you to flip the mask. So now that I've flipped the mask for this ear here, I can now just use this clay buildup brush and just pull the volume of the surface out and it's going to give me this effect. So now I can clear the mask by holding down control and clicking off the model. And then I can hold down control again and click off the model to apply that re-dynamesh. So now I have an even distributed surface across the mesh there. So now I can come through and have this quick silhouette of that ear kind of described, and now I can come through and sculpt on it. So just pulling out different forms like this. So after you have a handle of these functionalities, now you just need to come through and just start playing. So this video has been sped up. It's a bit of a time lapse here, just going through a whole bunch of different busts using the same functionalities we talked about earlier. So when you're modeling with ZBrush Core, think about it as you're working with clay. So you come through and scrub the surface out, change the design entirely on the fly, and just keep fleshing out different ideas. So this time lapse here is going to go through a whole bunch of different busts, so just random heads that I saw shapes with when I was working with the digital clay, and just fleshing out those ideas, and then if I like it to a certain point, just scrubbing it out and starting over again. So you can really see the power that this application has for realizing any of those ideas you have inside your head. So sit back and watch, and I look forward to seeing what you guys create with ZBrush Core.